Hey, everyone. Uh, I guess we're just about time. I'm Alex Russell, and uh, I'm one of the Blink API owners. We've got some others here on the call with us. Um, and my co-presenter, uh, Mike West, uh, obviously, for times and reasons, was not able to make it. Um, so you're, you're stuck with me. Apologies for that in advance. Um, but uh, today, uh, we wanted to quickly try to uh, help you understand how the API owners sort of think about your features in order to help give you the tools that you need to go as fast as responsibly possible. Um, and I will stress the responsibly part. <laughs> so, um, I, you know, I think we all maybe get the feeling that it's a, it's a little bit of a three-hour tour when you set out to build a feature, and then the API owners come back at you and say, Hey, I see that you asked for Tag Review, but did you ask all these other browser vendors for something? Or what about developer signals? Um, or um, have you considered going to an origin trial instead of doing an intent to uh, implement and ship? Or have you considered breaking these apart or um, you know, maybe getting more feedback? Um, and that can be frustrating. Uh, <laughs> we know that that can be frustrating. <laughs> and so, um, in order to arm you with everything you need uh, to maybe avoid uh, hitting some of those shoals, um, wanted to walk you through sort of how we think about it. So, um, you know, we do a lot of uh, exciting stuff on the platform. Uh, we do all sorts of differently sized things. We build features that, um, you know, are sometimes small, relatively incremental things that uh, you know, get added sort of in line with longstanding plans. Some of them are playing catch up. Some of them are being way out in front of other vendors. And they all kind of different, are all kind of different. Um, but so first, what did the API owners actually do? Uh, we are effectively process lawyers. And um, our job is to adjudicate intents as they come through the blank launch process. Uh, to maintain and iterate on the process itself. So that is to say, um, if you don't like the process, you can ask someone to change it, and the Blink API owners are that group. Uh, they vote and can change the Blink launch process itself. Um, the Blink API owners also vote on the membership of the API owners. So that is to say, um, if someone proposes someone for membership in the group, um, it's the API owners that decide. Um, and generally speaking, they kind of have a collective responsibility for the good health and function of the process itself overall. Um, functionally speaking, we vote on intents. Like, that's mostly what we do. Uh, we, we watch things come across the transom. And for an intent to experiment, that can be one LGTM and no negative feedback uh, for an intent to launch or ship. It can be three LGTMs and no um, hard questions remaining open. Uh, but hopefully, uh, that's what it does. So how does that interact with the rest of this process? So this is Dimitri Glaskov's um, sort of now classic uh, Blink um, standards web platform and Chrome interleaved launch process diagram. And the big blue ones are the ones where the API owners potentially have an impact. Um, we can help uh, see your intent to prototype and help you think about that. Uh, at the intent to experiment, uh, we may be the ones to um, uh, give you approval to do that for you know, some period of launches, uh, or maybe help shape that. And intent to ship, um, there will be some input. Um, and intent to deprecate and remove, uh, there's also input from the API owners. And those are separate. They, they interleave with the various pieces of the other um, process stuff that you have to move in order to get your feature out. Uh, we don't sort of control or necessarily influence Blink. Uh, sorry, uh, your browser's security, privacy, and UX reviews. Um, and uh, we defer, in many cases, to public standards forums for um, getting you feedback on the design of something. But when you go and uh, ask for a feature to go uh, to experiment or to ship, um, the one question that um, we frequently ask ourselves is, uh, does this feature or change solve an important problem well? And uh, the words important and well are doing a lot of work here. So let's unpack them a little bit. So um, at the same time as uh, we want to ensure that um, 
we are doing a really good job uh, in terms of compatibility. Uh, it is developers who actually have uh, some priority um, over our uh, view of other browser makers in the process. And that includes our peers in Chromium. Um, and users, of course, come first. But because we are uh, kind of the guardians of the public developer API surface area, we kind of have less responsibility for the aspects of this that directly impact users. Um, those parts tend to be taken care of relatively well by things like privacy, security, and UX reviews from the various browser projects that participate in Chromium. So you can think of us as sort of um, trying to balance the needs of developers uh, with, the, with the desires and interests of um, other vendors. And um, we do ask for a lot of input from lots of different people. Uh, but a lot of this is about gauging risk of a feature. So uh, when we ask you to go solicit feedback from other vendors, um, it isn't that we actually need you to have gotten agreement from everyone. Uh, I think it's a sort of a classic uh, trope that you will need to go get um, Mozilla or Apple to agree to your feature before the API owners will let you ship it in Chrome. Um, and if you leave uh, this talk with nothing else, know that that's not necessarily true. Um, but however, the risk is important to us. So if the risk is high, it is important that we have dotted I's and crossed T's um, in all the other parts of the process in order to prove to ourselves that we've solved an important problem well. Um, and if the risk is low uh, and other vendors are generally supportive or maybe we're following, then it's important um, to know that so that we can uh, help you navigate the process uh, well so that we don't end up with negative surprises. And so um, we primarily care that developers uh, will have a good time on the other side of what we choose to do. So uh, you'll hear things in intent threads like, well, how much of uh, the web does this break? We'll maybe go ask folks to go collect data about potential feature usage. And all of that is, again, with an eye towards risk. Um, how much risk are we putting existing websites at? Um, that is to say, how many web developers are we about to make sad? Um, or how much potential interest in there is, is there in a feature? Um, how many developers could we potentially make happy? And what does it mean to, to, do, to solve an important problem well? Um, so developers are our key constituency in this, in this particular arrangement. Um, so what does it mean to do well by them? Um, well, we want to know that developers actually care uh, specifically for new features, that the feature that we're adding is something that, that they would maybe want to use, um, that it, it solves the problems that they've enunciated to us that they've got, um, that we have made sure that it will integrate well with the rest of the platform. So when we go and we ask for things like wider view or are you running something through the tag, it isn't because um, we're in love with the process. It's because we have some um, reasonably grounded belief that in the past, uh, some of these other processes have helped us ensure that things fit well with the rest of the platform so that when developers encounter your feature, it actually fits well in their hand, right? It doesn't seem out of place with the rest of the platform. Um, and uh, compatibility is, of course, very important to developers. If something is not compatible, um, then uh, it's very difficult for them to navigate around it in some cases, and this can end up uh, at the trailing edge um, potentially being a question of, if we're playing catch up, how do we know that uh, we're actually going to end up in an interoperable state? And so we'll ask for things like web platform tests um, and good spec language. And if we're at the leading edge, making sure that we have that, um, that collateral in hand as well as um, some wider view on the design. So uh, we think about this in terms of risk. So to help you go as fast as possible, um, we know that API mistakes on the web platform are basically forever. So you may think that, well, you know, we can launch something and then deprecate it if it's wrong. Um, and in theory, that's true. But that's only true to the extent that it doesn't get away from us. Uh, the limits that we've got in the process right now uh, for things like origin trials or uh, deprecation removal usage limits are informed by a lot of pain over a lot of years in terms of um, what happens when we take something away. Um, what fraction of people using something is going to cause uh, <laughs> people to get uncomfortable phone calls about how we broke their critical applications. And so we're really, really cautious about that. And so we want to make sure that when we introduce something, um, we actually maintain the space to make it uh, malleable, to keep it malleable or to iterate on it while it is still in development, um, and then make sure that 
uh, when we do want to go and get something into the world, um, we have high confidence that um, we're doing something that is important for developers. So we'll ask for things like uh, collateral to help us understand and boost that confidence. So I think it's important to think about this in terms of a couple of different kinds of features, uh, little vignettes, if you will. So uh, we'll take three in turn and um, leave some time at the end here for questions uh, about how, how your features can go through this process or how to think about the, the hard cases, because there are lots of them that don't necessarily fit naturally into these three. But um, as sort of three uh, archetypes, uh, there are the trailing edge features where um, we're behind, someone else has implemented something, or two other engines have implemented something, and um, we want to become compatible with it. Uh, there are the lockstep launches, where there's a big effort at a uh, standards forum, and everyone has um, every intent to get their feature into the wild um, as soon as possible, um, based on some agreement. And then there's the places where we are out ahead, which are, are just somewhat uncomfortable. So in the cases where we're playing catch up, uh, Again, the API owners are going to be looking at this from a perspective of risk. And so the risks for a feature that's coming to Chromium after it has come to other engines are somewhat lower in many cases. That is to say, we are um, facing a de facto uh, pile of developer interest. There's a bunch of developers who may already be grumpy at us that they can't use feature X, Y, or Z. Uh, because Chromium doesn't support it yet. And so we kind of think of this as being somewhat lower risk um, from that perspective. And there will be some, the, the normal amounts of risk relative to um, privacy, security, UX, all the stuff that we sort of have to do for a feature. But generally speaking, uh, if we've got a spec and we've got tests and um, we're pretty happy with those and uh, we can, point at other vendors who have a feature already in the wild. Um, this is kind of the lowest risk um, profile feature. And so uh, you will probably not see us asking you to do something like run an origin trial for a feature where other vendors have already implemented and shipped it. On the one hand, they've launched it, and it has de-risked pieces of it because we know it can work, right? Uh, their browser didn't blow up, and they already launched it, and presumably somebody's using it. Um, and at the same time, uh, we want to make sure that we're doing our bit to, to uh, snuff up, uh, keep our uh, compatibility up to snuff um, when uh, there may be places in the specs and the tests that aren't fully specified along the way. So you'll get questions around that. Um, and in some cases, you may even get um, uh, a yes to an intensive prototype and ship. Uh, this is kind of the rarest of all <laughs> intents is the one where we say yes to an intensive prototype and ship. Uh, uh, but this will probably be the case where it happens, where we're playing catch up. All right. Um, uh, I'll also note that, that we now have sort of a tag um, uh, exception process as part of the, we trialed this last fall uh, for some intents. And um, this is a place where you can maybe try it out, uh, where if the tag is already weighed in or it's already launched in a bunch of places, uh, you may be able to. Uh, run your feature past a couple of X tag members or current tag members who are in the Chromium community uh, to get your thing, uh, not have to uh, ask uh, in the public forum for that. OK, stepping up the risk profile a little bit are these lockstep launches. And so this is a case, um, I think we've had recent examples um, for language features related to WebAssembly um, or for large features related to uh, WebXR. Um, and in these cases, uh, there's a multi-year effort. Uh, folks have all basically agreed on something inside of a working group filled with experts. Um, and everyone's going to basically commit to taking a risk around a new pile of features basically all at once. Um, and so there's actually kind of only moderate standards or vendor risk. Everyone has more or less agreed to this. And so the way the API owners are going to kind of look at a launch like this is going to kind of ask, um, OK, great. Uh, everyone's sort of on board with this. We think this is maybe a good thing to do. Um, we're all going to be jumping off this cliff together. Uh, should we? <laughs> like, uh, are we actually solving this problem for developers who want a solution? Um, or does the working group potentially have Go Fever? Uh, if you're not familiar with the history of Go Fever, it's a, it's a language that comes, or Launch Fever, it's language that comes from uh, the space flight world, uh, which I guess is sort of apropos to uh, Kinyiko and Kenji's keynote earlier, um, where it's really easy to get talked into the idea that, you're right, that your thing is correct without a lot of uh, counterbalancing evidence. 
um, when you feel like you're in a window and something has to happen right now or it can't happen at all. Uh, you don't want to be last, of course, um, and going first would be great. Uh, and so this is a place where we may be asking you to do things like um, really go back and, and think hard about the tag feedback that you may have uh, solicited late in the process. Um, uh, or if you thought that maybe you didn't need tag feedback, or you didn't need developer feedback, this is the place where you should expect some tag pushback, sorry, some uh, it generous pushback uh, to ensure that we are actually doing a good job by the end users who are in this case developers. Um, and rather than uh, just assuming that the consensus inside of the standards uh, body itself is sufficient to de-risk this, right? Because again, if we make a mistake here, we still own that mistake. Uh, long after we've actually launched the feature, we're going to continue to be on the hook for whatever happens with regards to deprecation if we all decide at some future point in time that we were wrong about the API, right? I mean, I think you can all um, think about app cache and go, oh, goodness. <laughs> so we don't want to repeat those mistakes in the way that we remove risk in that dimension is to help us um, give ourselves confidence that in addition to the standards risk, um, we've removed risk from uh, the perspective of developers that we actually have done a good job here. So uh, we'll ask you to, uh, to go talk to the tag and, and get developer feedback potentially through an origin trial, uh, which takes us to, I think, the highest risk class of feature, which are the places where Chromium is leading, where we're out ahead. And um, features that I work on are, are frequently in this bucket. Um, Project Fugu is kind of full of this stuff. Um, and this is the place where you should expect to dot every I and cross every T. You should probably expect um, when we're leading and we don't have a lot of engagement from other vendors that you're probably going to have to run something through an origin trial. You're definitely going to need some positive feedback from, from uh, developers to surmount the fact that we don't necessarily have confidence from other vendors that something is important. Um, we're going to have to do a great job with good explainers and specification text and tests. Um, and we will have to carry all of those boulders up the hill all at once uh, in order to make sure that we're being honest towards the goals of our process. So um, in these cases, uh, you, you know, you can sort of understand that the agenters are, when you send your intent out, are trying to figure out which of these potential buckets is this feature in, right? Um, so when we say, like, can we get a sense for um, how other vendors feel about it? It isn't necessarily that we um, are going to take the fact that they're not interested in a feature as the death knell for your feature. We just kind of want to know how much uh, we're asking, you're asking us to stake the reputation of the project on the feature. And if the answer is a lot, then we're probably going to go and ask for collateral relative to developer interest to counterweight the potential deficit in other vendors giving us air cover for getting something into the wild. Um, right. Uh, but with all that said, we also understand that there are some risks to not moving, right? So it is the case that when we're out ahead, we're not generally out ahead because um, we're just interested in, in making new technology. I mean, I guess that could happen, but this is an expensive and painful way to do it, right? <laughs> Working on browsers is not the easiest way to just go move code in the world. So presumably, you are doing something with a partner or with customers or with developers out in the wild who actually need the feature. So to the extent that that's possible, um, helping us understand that um, and understanding the risks to inaction can also be very important to the, the API owner's calculus. Uh, okay. And um, to the greatest extent possible, uh, when you're in the situation, try to uh, ship your minimum viable product project and break things off into separable origin trials that you can layer in as separate launches later uh, uh, and live to launch another day. Cool. Um, so. If you take nothing else away, uh, remember that uh, you don't need unanimity from every vendor on the planet in order to get your feature into the wild, and that we will ask whether or not your feature, we can prove to ourselves whether or not your feature solves an important problem well. Um, there's a whole class of things that I kind of oh, bucket into unforced errors. Um, one of them is filing your tag review at intent to ship time rather than intent to prototype or intent to experiment or somewhere between those two. Um, this uh, reliably holds you up. Um, and you should know that uh, feature teams build a reputation with the API owners. And so if you have a reputation for um, maybe not dotting I's and crossing T's, you may find that there is going to be, are going to be more questions about I's dotted and T's crossed. Um, we hear a lot of folks say that this is a small feature and doesn't need tag review. Um, that's not a thing. Uh, it is, however, a thing to go ask the folks who have or are serving on the tag to um, 
to assert that your thing doesn't need it. Um, uh, we hear occasionally, but not very often, people say that um, they don't really need a lot of developer signals because there's agreement in the working group at the last meeting. Uh, that's also not a thing. Those are two separate constituencies, and the risks that they pose are different, and we will kind of evaluate them separately. So consider them as being sort of independent variables. Um, and uh, just for your own health and well-being, uh, never extrapolate from uh, some engineer on another project liking your feature uh, in your intent as, say, that vendor over there likes it. Uh, we've evolved to a place now where they all kind of have a, a process. So with WebKit, we said something to WebKit dev. Uh, with Mozilla, we use the Mozilla standards positions repository. Those are kind of the official channels, and people get strapy back at us um, if you represent uh, those projects without actually using those channels. So uh, to save everyone a little bit of pain, uh, we will go apologize. Don't worry. It's not, it's not a huge deal, but um, that happens. Um, and uh, if you can get developers to actually pipe up in these threads or these intents or provide public feedback about the, the utility of your feature, that is extraordinarily helpful. Um, and, and there's more, but um, I, I want to leave some time for questions. Uh, that's, that's been a lot. Um, uh, where should we start? Welcome, Stephen. So okay, I'll ask. Anyone have, sorry, go ahead. Oh, so, so a lot of the API owners process seems to be about mitigating risk of, uh, of bringing something in that we then have to painfully take back. Um, I'm wondering if the availability of the deprecation trials like the reverse organ trials, changes the API owner's calculus about the possibility of deprecating things? Oh, that's a good question. Um, Yoav, what do you think? Um, it definitely helps. Um, but it helps when we're already on a path to deprecate. It doesn't necessarily... Like, I wouldn't be enthusiastic about shipping something only, you know, while saying we're going to deprecate it using a deprecation trial. Uh, but w once we're already on a path to deprecation, I think deprecation trials turn impossible deprecations into possible ones, if that makes sense. Yeah, we kind of want you to cram all the learning and iteration you could possibly do into the front end, um, which is kind of why origin trials exist. Uh, you know, Jason and his team have been maintaining this infrastructure for us uh, for years now to ensure that we have this, you know, uh, we, we have this tool that helps us cram as much as we can in, you know, with the anticipation that by, by the time we take, take it out from behind a flag, it's going to run away from us and we probably can't control that very much, so. Sorry, I apologize for not seeing the hands raised. Uh, Mike, uh, you had a question. Yeah, thanks. Um, I'm curious what, so on the topic of developer feedback or developer input, like if you happen to work in a, let's say an area like privacy, for example, most people, I don't know, I don't, I don't want to claim that, but like you may be trying to ship features where you're taking things away or making people unhappy. Um, and clearly, like privacy features right now, like no, very few vendors actually agree on like what the right approach is. And so, I'm, is it still useful to like link to like all the harassment? Or I mean, I'm I'm joking there a little bit, but like, w what do you do if nobody likes what you're trying to do, but you think it's the right thing? I mean, if literally nobody likes it, then it seems like you might not be on the right side of things. But presumably, there's a constituency that agrees that you're doing the right thing. So um, I guess it would be helpful in those cases to try to uh, find some, some balance here that helps us know that um, both uh, you know, developers can live with it and that it's the right thing to do, right? Like, I, I, I don't think, you know, the API owners are humans. And this is a, a classic case where what will frequently happen in these cases is it'll be contentious on the thread potentially, and then we'll ask you to come join an API owners meeting. So we meet once a week, every Thursday. Um, 
sort of uh, midday Pacific time. And we'll generally ask teams who are facing hard choices like this to come talk to us and, and catch us up with the details uh, that, that are maybe hard to glean from the thread. So um, hopefully we've had a couple of touch points up to that point with the feature. Um, but um, you know, there are ways to help us understand what's going on. Um, and I think that's, that's maybe the best, uh, certainly concrete next step. Uh, Kenji, you've had your hand up. Yeah, and maybe that that builds upon this question, which is, we we have this like priority of constituencies, and it starts with users, uh, but maybe like during the discussion between API owner that is being touched upon, but in the intent to ship and whatnot, there's not so much like user signals, and maybe we could do trying to do a better job of like like explaining whether or not this feature or, like is something that benefit users. And maybe like going through that exercise will also help uh, the feature owner to identify things that they didn't get quite right that could be abused and, and whatnot. So is that um, is that something that you feel like there is concrete support for already in the intent kind of like templates, or is this a um, is this maybe a an, an argument for some other way of framing that or like different prompting language in the tool like yeah i think i don't know if it's the role of the api owners but like having a body of folks who could look at a feature and say um have you thought about like this particular form of abuse maybe this should be addressed before you ship it um does this actually like benefit users like like asking this question that maybe we sometimes take for like granted could be interesting yeah, developers have been our proxy for that, but it's going to create proxy all the time. Uh, Jeremy, um... sure. I, I was, do you is there like an evergreen source for the um, like that? You had a great diagram showing like how the processes interleave and how they are, exist relative to each other in time, and I haven't seen something like that before. But I do seem to keep encountering process documents that are out of date or contradictory with one another about how these processes do integrate. Is there like an evergreen like place I can go to like understand how these things fit together ideally in lovely diagrammatic form? Hey, Chris, a question for you. Yeah, um, we are actually explicitly working on this. This is what we refer to as the playbook, um, which we're, I'm, leading the effort to try to collect all of these things, keep them updated and in one place. So it will have a consistent place to go to. Um, that's been kind of a challenging uh, undertaking, but it is it is going to happen. Thank you. Uh, David. Yeah, so related on the developer signals, um, how should we characterize signals from developers? For browsers, it's pretty straightforward. Um, but for developers, like I can all there's there's all often like a person on my GitHub who will have something nice to say, but at the same time, I can go to Twitter and find somebody tearing it down. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I think going to Twitter is a great way to always find someone to tear something down. <laughs> uh, they're from Canada. Um, <laughs> uh, I think there's been a little bit of help here recently to try to um, get a, a more concrete idea of, of what we would look for in developer signals. Um, and uh, sort of GitHub stars on explainers and positive attestations uh, related to, um, you know, this feature works great for me. Um, one of the things that we consider uh, heavily is origin trial feedback. So again, when we're leading, we're going to try to pack that process with as much opportunity for learning and feedback as possible. And so if we're getting good positive developer feedback in that, that moment, summarizing your origin trial learning back at the API owners and saying, people really like this, and, and here's some of the stuff we heard from them um, you know, from the survey that we sent at the end, uh, that, can, that can really help uh, shape the trajectory of your intent. Thanks. Uh, Jason, is there anything that you'd add to that? I think no, not that I, in terms of origin trials and, and using them up front. Um, yeah, and getting feedback from developers that we can cite. Uh, the only thing I would add as a, your life is better if you do this, is you can't, you need to 
actively try and solicit participation in your trial, that's a big one, right? Because we see it's very, it's really varied. So you can't assume people are going to flock to your origin trial. So partners, still important. Getting the word out, still important. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, I kind of think of it as like um, some people will go to a, a big standards working group and they'll try to like attach their their feature to this this big mass that's already moving um, and try to draft on it, and that doesn't work. Every feature is its own journey. Um, and so if you think of it as being you, uh, a, a thing that you have to evangelize on your own and build its own momentum, um, I think that's a, a better mental model for it than like this point addition that I can just use. It doesn't require a lot of extra work because each of these pieces in this risk analysis are going to you know, bring up the question of like kind of you and what army. <laughs> um, so the more that you're um, evangelizing a feature, the, the easier it will be in the end. I guess we're out of time, right? Um, uh, thank you all for coming. If you've got questions, uh, you can find us on Slack. Uh, we're at the Blink API owners discuss mailing list, um, and these slides are available. Thanks.